have to start. So, how do I do the first pattern? The first one was uh, the one over here. Um, row equals zero. Row equals zero. Column equals zero. Um, and or or? Um, or. Okay, so. Row equals zero or column equals zero. Let's try it. And here it is. Okay. <laughs> what happens if I use a range? And you mean and instead of or? Yeah. It would work for one square? That's correct. Yep. So let's try it. And I just get the square up here, right? What if I do a non equal here? Row well, row equals zero and it would fill everything else but that one. But but one square? Yeah. Okay, so he says it's gonna fill everything but one square. Do I hear an alternate opinion? Yeah? And he says it'll fill up everything but the stuff. Um, let's see what it does. And so you're right, it fills up everything except these because we're asking for the row not to be zero, that gives you everything down here, and the column not equal zero, so that gives you the, the and gives you the intersection of the two. Okay. Um, okay, how about do number two? Row equals column. So row equals column. And so then I saw some people struggling with this. So if you find yourself struggling with something like this, here's what you want to do. Is you want to actually look at the coordinates. What are the coordinates of this thing? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. What are the coordinates of this one? One, one. This one? Three, and so on and so forth. <laughs> three, three. And now you see the pattern, right? That the row equals the column. Yeah. Um, it's, one can theoretically see the pattern anyway, right? Row equals column, but oftentimes people don't, and so attaching the numbers is always a good idea. So, now let's say I want you to do the diagonal this way. Okay, everyone stare at this, even those who are not facing me. And tell, and tell me, how, how do I compute the diagonal? This <coughs> one here was to say row equals column. Okay, the gentleman here is cheating. Um, how will you cheat? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought you said no, and I was thinking you were saying maybe nine. <laughs> <laughs> because this thing here is in column nine, right? And row what? One or zero. Zero, right? This one here? Uh, one. So it's row one and column eight. This one? Two, <coughs> Okay, what's the pattern? Yeah,
What if I want these two? How do I add the two together? Row plus column equals equal to 9 and, and um, row equals column. Okay, so what, what uh, he said is, so, so let's combine those two conditions. And he said, all okay, right, so here's the idea. First condition is row plus column equals 9. That gives me the backward slanted line. Second condition is row equals column. And that gives me this line here. Um, any objections? Yes? It should be or. It should be or, indeed, because we want that one or the other condition. Now, when you look at the textbook, there is a common error section. And the common error says, confusing and and or. And then it goes into some diatribe as to you know, uh, that people confuse this. And I tell you, when students read that section, they always say, it'll never happen to me. Um, but it is an easy mistake to make. So, so I want you to think this through. So let's say, we're going to put here, and it'll work. And here we go. All right. So, um, the other one is, um, what's, the, what's the trick with number three? The stripes? Yeah, we have to deal with the evens and the odds. So how do you test that a number is even? The percent. Yes. Um, remainder thing. So that remainder thing. <laughs> Um, the modulus Technical is term. zero, yes. Um, and then you get get all the even ones. Okay. The Y one uses all the odd ones, so you have to say not not the even. Yes, so now if you want to use the odd ones, you could just say it's one. Let's have a quick look at the checkerboard. So clearly the checkerboard only depends on whether the row and the column are even or odd. Right? So so we really only have to look at this the first square here. Um, and then when we mod by two, the other ones will automatically follow. So how do you describe this one here? Zero, zero, and are they, well, in terms of evenness or oddness of the row and column? They're Notice they're both even. And here? There is a complicated way of now coding it up. You could say if, no, that's return, sorry. Return row mod 2 equals 0 and column mod 2 equals 0, or row mod 2 equals 1 and column mod 2 equal 1. That's the complicated way. What's the simpler way? So there is a trick to simplify this one. When they equal to each other, that's exactly right. So what he said is, um, to simplify this, you can say, if row mod 2 is the same as column mod 2. Hmm. That means they're both equal or they're both odd. Okay, so that's, that's the really clever way of doing it. 
choices could be. So if B is false, what is false not equal false? True. True. Is it? What is false not equal false? Never. It's false, right? <laughs> because this thing is in fact equal to that thing, so it is false. They're not equal. Okay. So now let's say it's true. What is true not equal false? It is true because it is in fact the case that true and false are not equal to another. That's carrying one. Alright. So, uh, so what is the output? What is the answer? It is the same. It's B, right? And that is the answer. And so apparently, uh, going through this situation correlates highly with doing well in computer science. So, uh, so I'll see you on Tuesday. Ask questions in the back of the room. Please wait until the last trailer. Thank you. Thank you.